Today I'm talking about V6GP. And I'm Toshiaki Makita from NTT Open Source Software Center. And the co-author is William Tu. Unfortunately, uh, he is not here. So there are two parts. One is XTP support for bees, which is my work. And the other is AFXTP support for bees, which is William's work. So let, let me start with uh, some basics and history of uh, XTP. So XTP is uh, incarnate fast or express data path. And you can install your eBPF program at the uh, NIC driver. And then the driver <coughs> runs the BPF program immediately after it receives packets. And, it c and the program can modify the packet or determine how to handle the packet, like drop or pass to the Palaya network stack or send back by TX or redirect to another driver. Okay. And let me introduce generic XTP as well. So as I explained, uh, XTP is implemented in drivers, so it requires uh, drivers implementation. So you need to choose XTP supported driver. This is not so handy. So generic XTP is created to allow you to use XTP on any driver, which is introduced in kernel 4.12. So this is essentially XTP implementation in network stack. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to explain why XTP is fast, <laughs> sorry. So XVP is fast because uh, it immediately after uh, uh, immediately handle packets after it receives packets, so it has low overhead. For example, it can skip metadata SKB allocation. Okay, so get back to the generic, and so generic is implemented in network stacks. So. It means it requires SKB to allocate it, to be allocated. So this is not as fast as native XTP. And in some cases, it requires packet buffer copy to meet XTP requirements, especially the uh, headroom head requirement. XTP requires some amount of headroom, but SKB in many cases uh, does not meet that. So, so it's not for performance, but good for functionality testing or uh, trial uses for beginners. And generic XTP is was extended to use on virtual devices in kernel 4.14. That includes Beast. So Beast got uh, XD support at that point, although it was generic. And I added native XTP support in kernel 4.19. So this is driver level implementation of XTP for peace. Hmm? So uh, let's compare generic and native XTP for peace. So this is uh, a common use case for these devices. A network stack, uh, network stack passes SKBs to uh, this device, and this device forwards the SKBs to 
its PIVs device. And in general case, the VS device passes the SQB to the upper layer network stack and Genex DB is there. And in native in native case uh, the point the XAP is executed is in the VS device itself. So that's the difference. But uh, performance wise this is the little difference. So so what's the point of implementing native XAP in VS? So the point is XAP redirect. So as I explained, uh, the physical NIC driver can redirect the packets to another interface by XAP direct action. And this can be done without allocating escape buff using XCP frame. So XCP frame is uh, a form of packet uh, which is efficient in, in performance than SKBuff. So SKBuff requires a separate metadata object. Uh, so it has some overhead to allocate and free the SKBuff metadata. But XTP frame has the metadata <coughs> inlined in the packet buffer. So it requires, it doesn't require the additional uh, allocation of metadata object. So again, this is this native XTP and redirect case and from stack case. So the top side figure uh, uses XTP redirect from NIC driver. And the packet will be forwarded in the form of, X, form of XTP frame. And the VS can forward the XTP frame to its VS pair and the peer de device runs the XTP program. So in this case, we, we don't need any escape of allocation or packet copy, so it should be fast. The bottom side figure uh, shows the traditional usage of these devices, and this requires SKB. So what I'm, I, I want to say is that the bottom side configuration does work, but it's not fast. So use cases. As you can easily imagine, this is for use, this can be used for containers. So container can install on the install its own XCP program in the VS device like this. And this can be used for service function chaining. By using XCP TX and XCP Direct. So, in this case, the first container does something in the XCP and returns XCP TX, and its peer forward the packet by XCP Direct to another container, and in another container, uh, do another things. So this is this can be realized even without containers by using XCP direct directory. Next I'll explain about design. So original Beast code used general software RQ backlog to enqueue RX packets from its peer. So so this is common routine for non-API non devices and handles only SKBuff. So there are no point to call XAP programs. So 
I I added uh, this dedicated Rx queues and NAPI handler. And so this NAPI handler is only enabled when XTP is installed. In this case, TX side enqueues the packet into PRX queues and the NAPI handler on peer drains RX packets and runs XTP program. So actually, uh, this model enables XTP redirect chain I explained a while ago, uh, avoiding infinite loop and stack overflow when XTP direct is uh, misconfigured and forms an uh, infinite loop. Even in that case, uh, this, can, uh, this design cannot overflow. So this is usage. So unfortunately, there are several prerequisites to be done before using PCXTP. The first, you need to a root user. So you need to use privileged containers. And for the best performance, allocate the same number of queues as CPUs. And turn off VLAN and TX check some floating features on uh, physical devices and VC devices because Offloaded VLAN or checksum is not feasible from XTP. And currently, this does not automatically take care of them, so you need to manually disable them. And don't forget to add Unicast filter for, uh, for this RX side in file interface. Okay. Then, in non-XTP direct case, you need you just need to install XTP program on this. And in XTP direct case, uh, note that you need to install XTP on the peer of XTP direct target this device. Otherwise, uh, the redirect packets will be dropped because the NAP handler is not ready when XTP is not installed. Okay. So performance numbers. I use two machines, which has 20 cores and 25 gigabit Ethernet NIC, XXB710 and kernel 4.20.13. And there are three test patterns. In all tests, I use packet gen to generate traffic. And the receiver side, the FINIC redirects packets to be by XTP direct. And uh, in drop test, uh, the PID this device just drops the packets. And in TX test, uh, the this device returns XTP TX and it the peer drops the packet. And in the direct case, uh, the peer device redirects the packet to another pair of these devices, and the packet will be dropped at, at the destination of this device. So the results uh, is like this. So The one flow test shows that uh, native XTP drop test achieves 10 megapps with one core and 7 megapps in XTP TX and redirect test, while generic XTP achieves only 2 megapps in each test. <coughs> and in 100 flow test, which uses 20 cores. Uh, native XTP uh, achieves 
almost 25 gigabyte speed. Challenges. Uh, the first one is improve XDPTX performance. Actually, XDPTX in this lacks batch processing, so currently acquiring QLock per packet. So this is not efficient, and my private experimental batch shows 10 percent boost with batch. So I'll upstream it later. And the second one is more intuitive way to enable XCP direct to this. So as I explained, you need to install XCP on the peer device, otherwise the packet will be dropped. This is uh, not intuitive. So I think more intuitive way is necessary in some way. And the last one is uh, XCP virtual switch for containers. So we need XCP direct between Fire and these devices. Uh -huh. So some kind of control plane is necessary, like OBS or P4C XCP. Okay, so the next topic is AFXJP support for this. This is William's work. Uh, this is mainly for OpenVSH uh, XJP date path. So AFXJP is a mechanism that allows redirecting raw XJP frames into user space. And it has zero copy mode which can directly DMA into user's buffer, uh, which is currently supported by I-40 and XGB. So this can be used for open boost each uh, data path. Uh, always user space has uh, existing uh, user space data path. So we can reuse it by using AFXJP. So with AFXJP, packets can be forwarded from drivers to user space, and user space can forward the packet to another device. The problem is no virtual port support AFXJP zero copy mode. So this is more detailed explanation. So OBS receives packets from a physical, physical device using FXCP, and flow entry decides to forward to a virtual bus. For example, a VS port connecting to another container, or a tap, a tap V host port connecting to another VM. But without FXCP support, uh, packet have to be copied and reject to the kernel. So this drops performance significantly. So uh, William proposed RFCs for VCF XDP and OBS AF XDP data path, respectively. So check them later, please. Okay. So this is. Uh, not about AFXTP, but OVSXTP. Uh, so, AFXTP data pass is proposed because uh, XTP implementation of OVS data pass is uh, full implementation is a pain. So, reuse the user space data pass to get the full flexibility, it's good. But uh, it has some downside that uh, it needs packet copy in user space when redirecting, even with zero copy mode. So because zero copy mode uh, can avoid copying in kernel, but not in user space. So I'm thinking there could be uh, 
Another idea to achieve high speed XJPOB is implementation by uh, partially offload OBS to XJP. So this doesn't achieve full flexibility, but uh, just speed up the OBS. So one idea is uh, reuse the TC offload mechanism to offload OBS to XJP. In this case, uh, the implementation will be similar to uh, BP filter. So using UMH to insert XJP program. And this requires a minimal set of actions supported. And unsupported flows will be passed to upper layer open VSH module. Well, we can implement this in uh, OBS user space VSHD. I'm now ch checking the feasibility of uh, these approaches. So, summary. Uh, this native XTP support is available uh, since kernel 4.19, which improves XTP performance in containers and achieves 10 million PPS with one core. It can be used for service function chain. And AF XTP is work in progress. This can be used for OBS. Any question? You done? Yeah. You done? Okay. <coughs> yeah. So could you go back to slide twenty one? Hmm. Which one? Twenty one. Perfect. Okay. So I just had a quick question on the, um, you probably didn't need 20 cores to achieve the saturation that the transmitter was sending, right? Like you probably could have done it with four or five maybe, is that right? Or did you need 20 cores? So in the second graph you have that you use 20 cores to achieve the, the line rate. You probably, did you? Did you only need maybe four or five to get? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's right. And that, that gets native, or that gets generic up higher. 20 gives you generic close to the top, right? Mm. But with native, you need just maybe five? Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually had another question, too, on, uh, hopefully I get my quote of, too. Um, on the next slide, on 22, you mentioned that um, I've seen the same issue or seen similar issues with the kernel path. and the queue locking causing, <coughs> causing problems. Um, does that driver not allocate a second set of transmit queues so you can do lockless transmit? So, sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? Which, so which lock, the queue lock per packet? The first one? Yes. Uh, so so I, I added uh, RX queue for this and it has locks, so oh, it's on the receive side. About it. Okay, okay, all right. No more questions. Thank you. Uh, somebody wants to go next, but but he he cannot guarantee there's a, a, a CPU. There's no binding for for the, you have to have the same amount of receive queues as CPUs before you can do it. But I implemented so we we do bulking of sixteen mm -hmm. uh, packets right now. We can increase that if you like. But. Uh, that, that's for XTP direct? Uh, yes. But yeah. the, 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 the TAQ, you're not getting the, the, the batching. But for the XTP redirect, I've implemented, so it's doing yeah, 16 yeah. Uh, bulking. So, so the problem is XTP TX. TX can, cannot use the infrastructure. Yeah, so but, yeah, but we, <laughs> we, it's an implementation detail. We can, we can do batching by another trick. Yeah, yeah. But Nobody else. I can ask a question. Yeah, so go back to the diagram. We, we have time, so we have about four minutes. The way you're showing the experiments, the different experiments. I, I, I just want to say thank you for implementing for, for VHH. I used it in, in, my, in my workshop. It was really, really great that you can, like, you can actually just spawn up uh, the VHH devices and play with XTP without having access to the physical hardware and still play with native uh, 
XTP, which is, is really, really nice to get a development environment running on your, your the laptop. Yes. Yeah, it is nice. Th thank you for doing that. Yeah. So no, just show the uh, diagrams where you're showing the different uh, assets. So pitch, pitch diagram. Uh, uh, we, okay, so keep going. Next. Uh, yeah, so this use case, the experiments. Uh, this, okay, so this one is, um, I, I was just wondering, I know this is a talk about VETH, but I was just wondering if you, uh, it's about VETH and containers, I guess, yes? But if you had, say, done Mark Villan or the new uh, proposal from all uh, and the Mellanox guys, I assigned a Q pair for the container and moved it into the container and then put XTP there, what kind of performance do you? Have you tried any, Mark Villan, for example, you mentioned XGBE. Mark Villan? Yeah, no. and then you put XTP on Mark Villan. I, I, I didn't test it. Y yeah, I'm, I'm curious when you, when you get a chance if you can test that. But he's right. talking about, you're talking about VMs now. No, uh, no, no, Mark Villan for containers. Okay. Yeah. 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 So basically, if I understand, you're talking about running XTP in the container, but sitting on top of some hardware queues. Yes. That, exactly. Okay, so that might be nice, but in, in the service chaining case, the problem you run into is that then to, to go to the second container, you'll have to bounce the, the queues and back, and, and this is not going to be good. PCI? Well, the PCI is going to be slower than your memory bandwidth. I'm just saying that this will, will be an issue that will come up. So the shared bus is going to be a problem, but uh, I'll be curious still. Like, uh, or you, your, your system can support, I said you said infinite queues, okay? But what about if, if we were to bounce between containers on the bus, you, that, that is still shared. You, you won't be able to, as the number of containers grows, you, you're not gonna scale, yes? He has to think about it. Now, <laughs> so yes, it's it's supporting and, and it can support a hundred gig. This is not a problem. Uh, we even you know get some customer that's ask for ask instead of using Virtio uh, to use a Lubeck on the on the PCI for packets between VMs because it's even more efficient sometimes. Point Simon was making is it's you're gonna hit the hardware bottleneck. The hardware is gonna become a bottleneck at some point. Whereas if you're just copying like this, you're using memory bandwidth on the on the host, so it's cheaper. That's the argument here, right? So maybe next net dev someone can write a paper. Yeah. Any other? You show example of using OVS with XTP, and instead of using a TC flower. Um, do you believe what is, did, did you then test to see the difference between the performance? Mm, so, so sorry, please repeat the question. OVS offload OVS with of TC flower instead of uh, eBPF, instead of uh, comparing to XTP. Yeah, was one of the last slides. The last right. AFXTP. This one? Yes, yes, I think that's one. <coughs> did, did you do any benchmarks on, on number two? Uh, like no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I prefer the, the version two. Like, instead of re implement or instead of doing the AFXTP stuff, I actually prefer, like, doing the other one, the, the what do you call the other, like, to, to, to do the partial offload of OBS to, yeah. to XTP because it fits the OBS model that you can have. Offloading in, in several layers, and if if it, HTTP doesn't cannot find it, it it will pass it on to the to the next layer. Mm. Yeah. So I yeah. think that's a better, more clean approach. I would also like to see the benchmarks of it, of yeah. course. Yeah. And if you have TC flower that's have a hard offload, you can get it very fast. So th this is just an idea. So <laughs> I, I I haven't tested it or implemented. So you have three, <coughs> I think you have several benchmarks to test yeah. when you get back. <laughs> well, any more questions or?
we can let uh, Toshiaki off the hook. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.